Next on the agenda is the float needle valve. So this screws up into there and the float gets its fuel. It's just blocking there. This is my spare car, as I said. Fuel in there. When the float is filling, float bowl is filling, the float will, here's a new float, float will eventually rise and it will close off that and then it will stop fuel coming out th them two holes. Now what's interesting is, and I, and I bought the rebuild kit for the carb on the tractor, I bought it primarily just to get a new gasket. But if you look at the length of that needle compared to the length of that needle, it's, this is way shorter. Now I have got a selection of aluminium washers to play with the, the length. So I'm going to get my vernier calipers and I'm going to try and measure this needle fully out, this needle fully out, get the distance, I won't mind, I won't get it from there, I'll get it from the start of the valve itself. And I've got to try and work with washers to get that right. But more importantly, I'm going to take off the car that's on the tractor. The reason why I know that this le needle valve is leaking is if I leave on the fuel, I get fuel dripping out in there and hanging around there. And every now and again, when it's ticking over, it starts throwing out black smoke. I mean, if I get the likes of a plastic handle like that and go, it'll clear itself. That's only when it's ticking over. When it's running, if it's doing it, it probably is leaking into the intake and it's getting sucked up and it's probably not making a whole lot of difference. So it's something I wanted to get sorted. Um, so I think now is the time to do it. So firstly, do the measurements here with these. There's the carb from the engine off. So the next thing is take out these five screw bolts, split it, and then we can start seeing what the story is here. So this one, seems to be the best part of a millimetre longer. So there's a greater distance from the, the top of the valve to the bottom when that's opened than this one. So we can, based on those two, play around with copper washers. So my plan is, for the fun, is to take out the one that's in there, compare to that, there's numbers stamped on it in letters, and then compare him. I want to use him. This one does seem to actually be sealing. So you can simply blow in there, and let this valve drop and if you can't blow through it well it's sealing like and of course you can literally just attach a fuel line on there if you want as well and it should stop when uh, it's hanging down anyway let's get this stripped so there's the carbon two halves i really hate splitting the carb when you have a good gasket and this gasket was really really well stuck really well stuck so i had to kind of go around it and try and get it to come in one piece but no i didn't want to but look, I'll put a tiniest smear of Indian head on it, I think, just to help seal. And uh, yeah, so that's the lad we want there. He has to come out. I have the top of the carb connected up to the fuel line. I have the new needle valve in. I'm after putting copper washer behind it to make sure that it's the right thickness. I've measured all with the uh, aluminium washer, I should say. I've measured all with the vernier calipers. So they're both new and old. We're 14 mil with the needle valve dropped so we'll turn on the fuel and see if that seals that does seem to be sealing so i have the fuel off so if i turn the fuel on that'll run fuel out there and when you push that needle valve up it stops so i held it up and i gave it a wipe around and made sure it wasn't leaking ah, it seems to be fine i'll give it another quick tighten but i'd say we're sorted there now on our um needle valve front so this was the one i took out and a quick get it a focus. I had a quick little test with blowing down there. It's hard to know. It definitely wasn't sealing one hundred percent. So we'll uh, slowly start putting things together, but not before I take out the float. Probably two, probably two hand job, and uh, give everything a blow out and all of that. Take out the the jets and clean them out. So it's back in one piece. Had the fuel turned on the last few minutes, so if the needle valve was leaking, it would be spilling out into the... There's a little uh, overflow kind of an outlet there, and it would also be 
coming out in under there so and I think we're fairly dry in there so that's good I always like to have my fuel pipe um, making it as easy as possible to flow of gravity it's a bit too long for that but I can shorten that but it hasn't given any problems up to now so I'm going to try it for a start now and see how is it running because as I said before lately what was happening was ticking over it would run really bad nearly cut out and it would be thrown out a lot of black smoke so I'd say what that was was a bit of sediment uh, stopping that needle valve clo closing completely and the fact it was leaking as well but I mean it would have been slowly filling up that float chamber the whole time so over fueling so we'll just see how it how it goes so that's it running it's very very cold here lately we are having a cold spell so it sounds cold in the running the exhaust is always a bit louder when it's cold out so i suppose the test for this there's a few tests i always used to have to turn off the fuel as soon as I stopped the engine, even if I was going to start it within a few minutes, I'd always turn it off because that float needle valve leaking, you'd have the, the fuel hanging around there or dripping. So one test is if I can keep the fuel on and not have that happen. Another test is that I don't get the problem again that I had twice already where it was ticking over low and it would start belching out smoke and struggling to tick over and then when I tapped here a few times with the handle of a screwdriver it sorted itself out or if I give it a rev it was it was happier but that is not metering the fuel properly when it's going into there and it's getting sucked in there it's not getting going through the jets it is going to be over fueling so that's the reason why I said I do this. So it's heating up there. So that would be a test as well as that. Well, it'll just show up in time if it's sorted. So it'll be interesting to see. It should seal. New valve. Played around with the aluminium washers to get the right length. And uh, we'll know, I suppose, through driving us when the engine's asked to work. If it's the float level's too low, it'll start laboring. If it's too high, I'll have to adjust the, I'll have to lean off the tick over on the main jet. And I haven't touched that main jet in months. It's only ever been the idle jet that I've messed with. So we'll see. I'm hoping I can call that a job well done, but I won't know for a while. So I'm going to turn off the engine, I'm going to leave the fuel on and I'm going to put a sheet of uh, white paper down there uh, for a while and see if there's a drip or I can just test them under there. But that's what I'm going to do for the short term anyway. So I've left this on for about half an hour and there's no fuel in there and there's no fuel coming out there. So I think it's safe to say up to now anyway, we can turn off our fuel for the night. And if that should, if it stays the way it is now, be sorted. And we'll see, does that affect the running of it? So the next time I take it for a spin, um, I have been noticing lately, every now and again, it's been running very rich all of a sudden. <coughs> and uh, as I was saying earlier, I had to keep tapping there to try and clear it. So I'm fairly sure that TVO tank in this is a bit dirty as well. So the petrol one's perfect. I do have to try and find a tank a tin of tank sealer and run, uh, splash it around in there and let it um, sort that out but um, yep until then what we can do is just keep an eye on the sediment bowl keep it cleaned and uh, see that it's just sort that so if it does that's another job sorted and uh, we are knocking a good bit of a good bit of crack out of this project so far I really am trying to get into the detail the little the little details the finer details and I'm enjoying it more than anything else. Um, and it really has, was what we are now, video 102, 102. So yeah, it, it has kept me occupied since June. It's now middle of January. And uh, I think we're making a few steps forward in progress each time. 
getting to know it, getting to know the sound it makes and the sounds it it makes when it's unhappy and the sound it makes when it's happy. And uh, yeah, so I think one of the next videos is going to be just checking these wheel nuts since it has been doing a bit of driving since they were done and just to check them for tension since they were all replaced. So until the next video, thanks a million to everyone who's liked, subscribed, commented, all of that. And um, I hope to just keep doing what I'm doing, keep going on and uh, keep enjoying this. And hopefully the people that are watching it are enjoying it as well and maybe getting a bit of help. And uh, I've got plenty of advice and help from YouTube. It's something I enjoy. So if I can uh, give something back, considering the amount I've been taking from it over the years, I'm more than happy to keep doing these videos. So take care until the next time.